Blair, Blair, Blair. Todd's Bike Shop, Todd's Bike Shop. It's time for Todd's Bike Shop. Yo! Hello. We are going to make a video because it does not exist yet on the internet. And that video will be tearing down to the flywheel to remove the PCB board out of a Wahoo first generation kicker. It's 2023. Fortunately, this device is not fully supported any longer by Wahoo. And so uh, I have an issue where I'm not finding the speed. So the optical sensor is located up here. It looks fine on the outside, but I'm not sure if it's running or not, or if the software's not running. And here's the timing wheel for that for that optical sensor. So there's known issues with that that have been documented well on the internet. But I haven't seen a full teardown type of video on this. So I'm gonna take the time to do that and show you how to remove your PCB board out of a first generation Wahoo kicker. Step one, three millimeter on these outside screws. They are here. Let's use a stand to try to do this because otherwise I will go insane turning the camera on and off. Again, three millimeter bolts here. The other larger, five millimeter in the middle here. It's quite tight. Most of the version one, you get this sort of handle. If you're in doubt about what version you make dealing with, this is the old one. There you go. Also went loose in there. Take this off. Are we there yet? Nope. Oh, plastic. One, two. Already, it looks like we got something original compared to other. Okay, screwdriver. Behind here, there's two more little screws. Just one more little screw back here. Take this guy off. There we go. This one that was missing. Small screw. Four. Four screws. Let me deconstruct this. Ah. Somebody's somewhere here. Ah, one more back here too. Another screw. And this will expose the belt and the main hub shaft flywheel. One, two, three. Nope, oh, there we go. One more down below here. We'll screw this into the plastic. Look at that, come right off. There we go. You'll notice in the version one and maybe the version two, ooh, check this out. Version one and version two, we have a toothed belt rather than the smooth belts that the later ones have and that causes, I guess, a lot of the noise. And check this out, there's an extra washer here. No idea where that came from. Maybe just fell through somewhere. Noise. another three millimeter screw. Okay. All right, next step, probably gonna be reducing the tension on this belt so I can go ahead and take the belt off, which is gonna give me access to the bolt here, the threaded bolt on these versions. So rather than like version five that has a key pin, this one here just has a screw type of gearing. So let me get to that. That's going to be up oh, another three millimeter. Here you'll notice. Uh, 
here you'll notice three millimeter to reduce the tension here. Probably should mark where I'm at. Let's get the Sharpie up. Really? All right. Dislodge this tension tensioner here. I've got a Sharpie now. So I'm gonna mark roughly where the edge of it is here. It's the starting point. It looks like somebody else has been in here before. Just interesting. So I might be exploring areas that have been previously traveled. So I'm just gonna loosen this way the hell off. Pardon my French. Pull this guy down or off. Heck, let's take him right off. Works too. Check him out. And the belt is loose. The belt is off. So I've heard of people trying to get good information about these belts to replace them themselves. So here's information about this particular belt. And there's a barcode even. It's like it's uh, in case anyone's out there trying to replace one of these and needs to know in case their numbers got burned off in time. Excellent. So this is aluminum. So we're going to get ourselves some tools off the wall here. I think I saw you know, vice grips getting used. Let's take our cheap Harbor Freight vice grips and we'll wrap them up here so we can do it safely. And there it is. This should probably be the thumbnail for this video because it is the bane of everything we're going after here. I think I have mostly a software problem with a set of really nice hardware. I happen to be a steward of this hardware. I have more respect for it, unfortunately, than the company that made it. So this is the this will be the program. Next steps, I'm gonna try to go in here and even remove this motherboard so I can document it with some photographs. I'll have those included as links off of the video. Thanks. Okay, so I've removed the two connectors. There's a third up here that attaches, I believe, to the speed sensor. I saw the same thing up in the optical speed sensor here. Um, I'm again using my little screwdriver, little tiny Phillips. That should be the ticket. The four corners of this board to get him off of there. There's a tiny washer too. It's not the grounding spot tab on the board. It's actually a washer. It's interesting. Two. It's a tiny washer. Halfway there. Sensor. Off. There it is. Ooh, not even a thing on the back. It's like a one layer board. It took about 15 seconds for a real E to whip up a diagram on that one. Come on. So I'll, uh, I'll post these up there, hoping I'll find that double E to help me out. Thanks.
pictures of the board. I'll take, I'm gonna take the optical sensor out as well, take some pictures of that for documentation. So this is where you use the two millimeter Allen key to pull these guys off here. I'll show you what this looks like in a second. Here this is, it sits inside here. Popped them off. We got the diodes there that talk to the speed speed sensor there. So the optical optical diodes. There's two boards. First board looks a lot like the same wiring that we have down at the main board. And the secondary set of wires like power potentially here. So I'm not quite sure how these connect up to the the board I have here. Seems like I got too many wires going on. This is the board. So I'm sure those four wires, some of those come down and probably feed into the, the main bus up here on the motherboard. So keep going. Okay, so I've removed the plugs. Just get a record of what we're doing here so that we can reassemble this someday. And that's one motherboard, another board here. So I'll look into this thing. I wonder if the whole brain of the thing is actually up here. So few chips on here. I don't see any logic circuits. I'm wondering if either we're going to have to go back in here and look at that strain gauge or rip that all apart. Maybe there's more brains here versus what's on these two boards here. So I'll try to get this guy off. Screws here holding this board. Instead there's this little pieces of melted plastic. So I'm taking a drill bit here manually spinning the drill bit on top of those little melted plastic bits here and see if I can encourage the board to come off. It seems to be a softer plastic than housing plastic, so maybe just a hot glue type of situation. But we've got two of them popped off already, so we'll continue with them. I suspect this is where the good stuff is. That's just a power board managing the power and power supply. This, however, that's got the look of something, something that you can run a firmware on, eh? Is it NRF chips? I think those are Bluetooth type of style chips. And we will get some solid photographs of this for, for our purposes. Backside, not a whole lot going on wiring comes into it and the diodes again I'm just gonna leave that board in there for now in case we need to remove it but the thing is if it's talking and it was talking right the device was giving me power just not speed this indicates to me this stuff is actually working to a degree unless of course I it stop working. So let's get some pictures. Blair, Blair, Blair. Todd's bike shop. Todd's bike shop. It's time for Todd's bike shop. Yo.